Max Guest served our country as a Marine and has written a series of books related to his military experiences, including his time as a soldier in the first Gulf War, and his latest book detailing his battle with post-traumatic stress disorder and how he has overcome it. Welcome, Robert Shiraki, to The Morning Blend. Robert, Perfect. congratulations to you. Thank you. I mean, writing a book is not easy. No, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, these two books specifically took a long time to write. The first one uh, took you know, about four or five years, and the second one about six. Okay. And part of that's because you know I was writing them as I was going through the process of you know, especially with the second book, the Chrysalis. Um, you know, as I was going through my healing process, I was writing that, so I was documenting it. The first book I wrote it because it was you know, I just had a story to tell, mm -hmm. and I needed to get the war off my chest. Um, you know, and. I didn't really like talking about it at all back then. It, it's still difficult, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I figured this way I could write it, put it in a book, and if anybody asks questions, I just hand you them the book. You could just hand them the and, book. Uh, and it's sort of blossomed from there, <laughs> and I found that, well, once you hand somebody a book, then they start asking even more mm -hmm. questions, so. <laughs> and did this, did writing the book really help with like your therapy of what you had yeah. gone through? Yeah, it, um, the, like when I wrote the first book, uh, I didn't know it, that it would until I wrote it. It was very cathartic. Um, it allowed me to release a lot of those pent-up emotions in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wrote the second book as I was going through the healing process with the post-traumatic stress because I had figured out how much the, the first book actually helped me. And so I did it, and uh, I'm writing a third one now. Wow. Um, so, and it's pretty much about everything that I've learned over the past 20, 25 years dealing with all these things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, trying to pass that along to others and help them out as well. Mm -hmm. so. we're, you know, we're always told that communication is like a way of releasing things. But there's yeah. a lot of military men and women that come back that truly don't want to talk about it. Why is that? Well, it's hard. Um, it's still hard for me today. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain things I still just won't talk about or even do sometimes. Um, is it just because it brings up so much emotion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's why those two books took so long to write is because I would write it, sections of it, and I'd have to put it away for a while. Oh, I'm sure. And take a break and then come back to it when I felt strong enough again. And unfortunately, um, you know, I think the only real way to get through uh, this process of dealing with post-traumatic stress or any type of grief really is you have to face it. Mm -hmm. um, you ha and in order to do that, you got to relive it because you have to process those emotions. Um, you know, uh, once you do that, then they just become memories instead of emotionally charged memories. Mm -hmm. um, and that's difficult to do. I mean, it, you've been in a situation like combat, uh, and when you're done with it, you make it, you don't want to go back again. No. You know, so, you know, and uh, you write a book or you t talk about it, you have to go back again, sort mm -hmm. of. And that's, uh, that's why they don't, they don't talk about it. It's because they, uh, at least with me, I just felt like it was better if I just forgot about it. Right. And like, you just buried yeah. it and said, right. if I don't talk about it, it almost didn't exist, even though you knew it existed. Right. And, it, and that, that backfires on you every mm. time. Yeah. You know, I talk about in the book how when I wrote the first book, it, uh, and I got done with it, it was like I was a Coke can that somebody had just shaken up profusely, and my top finally blew, and everything just came out. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. When you bury it, and you, you are like we used to say in the core, you know, suck it up, swallow it. Yep. You know, when you do that, at the time it works, but it always comes back. Mm -hmm. And when it does come back, each time that you do that, it's worse. I was just going to say, it's got to be more powerful every time. Yes, yes. Because it's saying to you, release me. Let's right. be done with this. Right, let's, let's get on. But let's you're trained and you're taught to say, nope, I got to right. swallow it and I got to bear it. Right, and that works for combat because, you know, in combat you can't be emotional. You can't uh, worry about things. You can't. Um, be concerned with anything other than the task at hand mm -hmm. and because if you do then the worst ends up happening so it works for that but once you're done it doesn't work anymore and unfortunately when you're done and you get out there's nobody there to teach you how to do right that. there's no training you know, anymore you're out you're out that's it and um, you know even when you go to try to see help seek help there's still that process is still evolving they're you know they're trying they're learning things and the healing process in terms of post-traumatic stress it's a very individual mm -hmm. type of um, process you know you have to try many different things and find what works for you and then stick with that mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be different for everybody you know so one of the goals with with the second book is just to sort of show people you know what i went through because when i was doing it i there's a lot of self-help books out and things like that that are really quite good, um, and they did help. 
but I had always wished that there was a book out there that said, this is what it's actually like to go through it. This right. is what happens. Because there was many times where I got knocked off my path, so to speak, because I just couldn't take it or thought maybe I was going nuts or something like that. And if I would have had something to refer to, mm -hmm. to know, okay, I, I am doing the right thing because I'm going through the same thing that this person is going through while I'm doing this, so I know I'm on the right path. And uh, that's one of the main goals with these, with these books is to well, provide that. For well, people. you are very, very inspirational, Robert. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for joining us sure, today. And congratulations again on both of your books, and we're looking forward to the third one. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And you can learn more about Robert and his book, a Line in the Sand by going to his website, robertshiraki.com. Again, that's robertshiraki.com. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how you can get your favorite frosty treat, a sandwich, or even some ranch fries and help out a nonprofit in town. We'll talk to the beneficiary right after this.